Hey, what's up? It's Jake from Nimbus DevOps, and we are in section 1.2 and learning a little bit more about Python. So let's ask the question, why would you want to use or learn Python? Well, if you read a book, it's going to tell you it's portable, coherent, faster, it has extensive libraries, it's a super high quality language, it integrates with other software, and well, it's just really enjoyable to use. My answer is, it makes you marketable, right? So if you want to become a developer, you want to learn a language that's going to help you find a job, right? So statistically, you would want to learn a programming language that offers you the largest volume of job opportunities so that you can apply to more jobs with a better chance of being able to find one. Because there's no point in learning a language that few companies use because then the competition is going to be much steeper for you because the applicants that do apply likely have a little bit more experience than you. So why wouldn't you want to learn Python? Well, again, if you read a book, it'll tell you that it's slower than a compiled language. This is Java or C or C++. And while that's true, I don't think it matters. I, I, I think there's no reason to not learn Python. You have every reason in the world to learn Python. Um, and here's an example. Who's using it? Well, look at the list. Google, YouTube, Dropbox, Disney, and a whole bunch of others. Instagram, Spotify. They got games like World of Tanks, Civilization IV, The Sims. Um, I mean, who doesn't love The Sims? Uh, but it's also used by sysadmins. I use it as a sysadmin, system engineers, network engineers, uh, web and API programming, GUI apps, games, data science, databases, real-time comms, all kinds of stuff. And even universities are starting to use it as a way to teach introductory programming classes. So let me go back to this point of why you want to learn it. So if you go look at jobs, and I'm just on LinkedIn jobs here, and you just go type in software or software engineer or software developer, you'll find a bunch of different job posts that have some ideal candidate qualities, right? And you'll see here, here's an example, somebody that knows Go, Groovy, Java, Python, or something similar to that. Well, I went ahead and um, clicked through about 20-ish jobs and uh, just wrote down the, the names of the programming languages that I found and then just took note of the frequency so I saw Python pop up 14 times and as you saw in the previous example of that job post sometimes multiple languages are listed in a single job post so that is why I have so many um, this total of 45 um, language frequencies that I found over 20 jobs but look at the numbers, look at the distribution. You've got you've got Python is way ahead, followed by Java, and then in third tie would be Go and JavaScript, and then your C and PHP, TypeScript, C Sharp, and Ruby after that. So a clear front runner in this small sample size that I did was Python. Now, the promoted jobs are the ones uh, that are advertised and going to be at the front of the line. So you can see here, this one's promoted, 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 promoted. And I'm on page one. Am I on page one? Page four, right? So if I go to page eight, you're like, oh, well, surely none of these are promoted, promoted, promoted. Pro Everybody's promoting these. So you can promote your job and still go through 10, 20 pages of jobs, and you're still going to be on jobs that are being promoted to the front of the line. So I'm, I'm picking jobs that are that people really want somebody for. They have a critical need for it. They wouldn't be paying for you know promotion privileges. But also I did this because I wanted to make sure I wasn't just using the first page. So I have a little bit of distribution throughout um, all these job listings. And the average person isn't going to really apply for 100 jobs. Um, some people do, but I think 20 is a fair a fair size. So if you applied for 20 jobs, you would expect to see something like this in the requirements. Now, this doesn't mean that none of them, um, uh, or you know, this this some of them require or would like multiple languages, right? So I saw Java pop up with TypeScript, or Go with Python, or C++ uh, C++ with Ruby, or C Sharp with PHP. So there's different combinations. It just depends on what 
the application is running, how it was built, all that stuff inside of the company you're looking for. So, um, I again, I think there's there's no reason to to shy away from Python. You should be diving into it even in 2022. Uh, the trends haven't changed much. This is uh, much what 2021 looked like, and although we're early, it's March. Um, I think I would predict that the rest of the year will be likely pretty similar to that. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. What kind of programming languages are you trying to learn? Would you like to learn? Do you think it's worth learning? Um, but I think Python is a clear front runner. And if you're looking to get into development, software development, engineering, um, there is no time wasted in learning Python. So we'll go ahead and continue with the course and we'll move on to installing.